Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the author and share a local scene tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. In this tutorial, you will create a 3D building with editing tools, add a 3D base map, and share the scene to your portal. You can follow the full written instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. I've opened ArcGIS Pro and signed in to my ArcGIS Online account. We'll start by opening the Author and Share a Local Scene project package. Make sure the portal is set to ArcGIS Online and search for Author and Share a Local Scene V330. Open the one with the authoritative badge. The project opens with a local scene showing a polygon layer of building footprints for a proposed mall in Cape Town, South Africa. Since this work takes place in South Africa, which uses the metric system, let's confirm that the unit settings are correct. Go to the Project tab and open the Options dialog box. Under the Project Options, click Units, Expand Distance Units, and confirm they are set to meters. Click OK and click the Back button to return to the project. The building footprints are 2D features, but we want to display them in 3D. Right-click the Building Footprints layer and open its Attribute table. The table contains a height field that stores the heights of the buildings in meters. We can use this field to extrude the buildings. In the Contents pane, confirm that the Building Footprints layer is selected and click the Feature Layer tab. In the Extrusion group, click Type and select Max Height. Click the Field drop-down arrow and select Height. The units should be set to meters. In the scene, the buildings display at the height stored in the Attribute table. Because Extrusion is a 3D property, the layer moves from the 2D Layers group to the 3D Layers group in the Contents pane. The extruded buildings display well in ArcGIS Pro, however, because the feature geometry is 2D, they only support 2D editing operations. To create and edit features that support 3D editing operations, let's convert the Building Footprints layer to multi-patch geometry. In the Geoprocessing pane, search for Layer 3D to Feature class and open the tool. The input feature layer is Building Footprints, and the output feature class is Buildings 3D. Check the Disable Color and Texture checkbox. We will apply different symbology to the layer later. Run the tool and open the Buildings 3D Layer Attribute table. The attribute table looks similar, but the shape field is now multi-patch. We don't need the Building Footprints layer anymore, so let's remove it. The proposed plan for the mall includes six buildings that are designated as stores, dining establishments, and amenities. Recently, a new building was approved that will function as a coffee stand. We will edit the building's 3D feature class to create the new building. On the Map tab, click Bookmarks and go to the Mall Bookmark. The coffee stand feature will go here between the luxury stores and the food court. Go to the Coffee Shop Bookmark. On the Status bar, Click the Constraints button to enable on-screen constraints. This will help us add fixed direction and distance values to our features. Hover over the area between the two visible buildings and note that the elevation is around 15 meters. In the Contents pane, double-click the scene name to open its properties. On the General tab, we can see the rotation of the scene is set to negative 9.8. We will use this value to orient a reference grid. Back on the status bar, click the Grid button to enable the grid. It may not be visible yet, but we'll fix that in a second. Hover over the Grid button and make sure Horizontal is checked. Set the spacing to 5 meters and the rotation to 9.8. Let's set the grid elevation to be slightly higher than the average elevation of 15 meters around the coffee shop so that the entire grid displays as close to the surface as possible. That's good, except the default color of the grid lines is too faint. Click Grid Settings. In the Editor Settings on the Grid tab, expand Snapping and Inference and confirm that Snap to Grid is checked. Next to Grid Lines, change the color to black. Click OK. Lastly, make sure Snapping is enabled on the status bar. This will allow the features we create to snap to the editing grid. Now we will create the new Coffee Shop feature. Click the Edit tab and click Create to open the Create Features pane. Under Buildings 3D, click the Buildings 3D template. The Create 3D Geometry tool is selected by default. Move the mouse pointer over the map and see that the cursor changes to crosshairs. 
Click the intersection of the grid at this location to add the first vertex. Move the mouse pointer in any direction. A blue line connects the cursor to the last vertex, and the constraint text box shows the distance of the line. Press the Tab key to highlight the current value, type 10, and press the Enter key to set the distance to 10 meters. Use constraints and click on the grid intersections to create a 5 meter by 10 meter building footprint. Ensure that two angle indicators confirm that the shape is a rectangle. Double-click to complete the base of the building, which appears as a gray rectangle. Now we can extrude it to its proposed height. It will be easier to see this effect if we tilt the scene. On the Map tab, go to the Angled Editing bookmark. Hover over the shape and a green handle appears. Point to the handle until it turns red and drag it slowly upward. While dragging the handle, press Tab and type 3.5 in the Constraints box to set the height as 3.5 meters. Press the Enter key. On the Editing toolbar, click Finish. We need to make sure we save our edits. On the Edit tab, click Save and click Yes on the Save Edits prompt. In the Selection group, click Clear, close the Create Features pane, and turn off the Grid and Constraints buttons. Multi-patch features can be symbolized with textures as well as colors. We'll apply a concrete texture to the buildings. Click the Map tab and go to the Mall bookmark. Right-click the building's 3D layer and click Symbology. Click the white symbol. On the Gallery tab, search for buildings and expand the procedural symbol style if necessary. Click the Multi-Patch Textures symbol. Click the Properties tab and go to the Layers tab. Click the Texture drop-down arrow and select Concrete. At the bottom of the pane, click Apply. The Concrete Texture symbology displays well in ArcGIS Pro. However, Multi-patch textures are not supported in web scenes unless they have been applied using the Layer 3D to Feature Class geoprocessing tool. We ran this tool earlier to convert the 2D buildings layer to multi-patch geometry. Now let's run it again to preserve the texture symbology when we share the scene to the web. Make the geoprocessing pane active. The Layer 3D to Feature Class tool is still open with its previous settings. Change the input feature layer to Buildings 3D and change the output feature class name to Concrete Buildings. Since we want to preserve the symbology we applied, uncheck the Disable Color and Texture checkbox and run the tool. The Concrete Buildings layer is added to the scene and looks identical to the Buildings 3D layer. Right-click the Buildings 3D layer and click Remove. Because of the World Elevation 3D layer, the scene displays elevation. However, the imagery base map is 2D and the houses in the neighborhood of the Plan Mall are a flat picture. We'll add a 3D base map to enhance the scene. On the Map tab, click Base Map and under 3D Base Map, select Topographic. The new base map is composed of a 2D topographic base map and 3D layers of buildings, labels, and trees. In the Contents pane, right-click the Concrete Buildings layer and click Attribute Table. The new Coffee Stand feature has null values for its attributes. We'll add the values manually. In row 7, in the Name field, double-click the Null value, type Coffee Stand, and double-click in the Type field. Repeat this to add Dining as the type and 3.5 as the height. Click the Edit tab, save the edits, and close the table. Before sharing the scene to ArcGIS Online, we need to change the coordinate system to match the base map, which is in WGS 1984 Web Mercator. For our mapping work, we really want to stay in the local South African coordinate system, so we'll make a copy of the scene. In the Catalog pane, expand Maps, right-click Scene, and click Duplicate. Close the current scene view. Right-click Scene and rename it to Local Projection. Right-click Scene 1 and open it in a local view. Let's set a few properties before we share it. Double-click the scene name to open its properties. On the General tab, change the name to Strandfontaine Mall and check the Allow Assignment of Unique Numeric IDs for Sharing Web Layers checkbox. On the Metadata tab, fill in the information as shown. When we share the scene, the metadata appears on the Item Details page. On the Illumination tab, check the Display Shadows in 3D checkbox and change the illumination defined by to Date and Time. Click the Calendar button and select a date and time during the day. Change the time zone to UTC plus 2 Harare Pretoria. 
On the coordinate systems tab, the current XY coordinate system is set to a local projection appropriate for Cape Town. Expand layers and expand each of the three layer headings to see which layers are in which coordinate system. Make sure the coordinate system is set to WGS 1984 Web Mercator and click OK. On the Map tab, go to the Mall bookmark. We are now ready to share the scene to the web. Make sure you are signed in to ArcGIS Online or an ArcGIS Enterprise portal. On the Share tab in the Share As group, click Web Scene to open the Share As Web Scene pane. Under Item Details, we can see the name, summary, and tags that we added earlier. Modify the name to include your name. Optionally, set the Location and Share With options. At the top of the pane, click the Content tab. On the New Content tab, we can see the portal content that will be created when we share the scene. The Existing Content tab shows the existing web layers that will be included. At the bottom of the pane, click Analyze to check for warnings or errors. Click Share. When the green success message appears, click Manage the web scene to open the scene in ArcGIS Online. The metadata we added in ArcGIS Pro appears on the item page. Open the scene in Scene Viewer, navigate around the scene, and click a few buildings to see their pop-ups. Click Save, and on the Save Scene window, click Save again. At the top of the page, next to the scene name, click the Options button and click Content. We can see the content that was created when we shared the scene. A web scene, a scene layer with its associated feature layer, and a service definition, which contains publishing specifications for the scene layer. For more detailed steps, follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation, linked in the description for this video.